Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of NASCAR's Lost Teams, Diamond Ridge Motorsports. Diamond Ridge Motorsports was a NASCAR Cup Series and B Bush Series, now Xfinity Series team, owned by Gary Bechtel from 1990 through 1999. The team had an array of different drivers over their stay in NASCAR. To name a few, there were Steve Grissom, Jeff Green, and even Robert Presley. Now, there were others, but... Those were basically the most well-known. They, they never really found their footing, so to speak, in the Cup Series, but they definitely had some Xfinity Series success. Here's the team's career year by year. So, Gary Bechtel found, formed Diamond Ridge Motorsports in 1990. The team made their NASCAR Cup Series debut at the season's Coca-Cola 600 in Charlotte in the spring. Bobby Hamilton was behind the wheel of, of a number 68 Country Time Lemonade Pontiac, starting 8th and finishing 39th. A little later in the season, Phil Parsons made three starts for the team behind the wheel of a number 29 Pontiac. His best start was an impressive 8th at Talladega. His best finish was 19th at Darlington in the fall. Originally, Dale Jarrett was the team's first choice to drive the number 29 in those three races, but Jarrett drove the Wood Brothers number 21 car when Neil Bonnet got injured. Therefore, the team chose Phil Parsons instead. Now, the team did not run a single race in 1991, but then in 1992, Diamond Ridge Motorsports made a return to the NASCAR Cup Series with John Krebs making two starts for the team. One in the number 99 Pontiac where he qualified for the race at Sonoma, finishing 31st. Then, in a number 29 Chevrolet, Krebs made a start at Phoenix in the fall, finishing a respectable 23rd. For the 1993 season, John Krebs returned to the Diamond Ridge Motorsports team again to make a few sporadic starts. He made another start at Sonoma, finishing 34th, then DNQ'd later in the season at Michigan. In the number 99 Chevrolet, he finished 35th at Pocono in the summer. Andy Hillenberg also made one start in, in the number 99 late in the season at Charlotte, finishing 41st for the team. Steve Grissom made his first, first start for the Diamond Ridge Motorsports organization in the fall at Phoenix, finishing 29th, driving a number 29 Chevrolet. During the 1994 season, Diamond Ridge Motorsports purchased Steve Grissom's Xfinity Series team. They brought Steve Grissom over as their driver, as well as Channelock and Meineke as sponsors for the number, number 31 Chevrolet. Grissom's best finish was 5th at, at Richmond in the spring. Now, he only made 11 Xfinity Series starts under the Diamond Ridge Motorsports, you know, banner. But... He ran the entire season that that year in that car with that team. It's just that Gary Bechtel didn't buy. The, the sale wasn't complete until, well, there was only about 11 races left in the season. That's why he only had 11 starts for the team in the Xfinity Series in 1994. So, now, also, Grissom made 28 Cup Series starts for the team, but the team got off to a, a rough start by DNQing for the Daytona 500, then later at North Wilkesboro, and not to mention the inaugural Brickyard 400 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. His best start was 8th, and his best finish was 7th, both coming at Richmond in the fall. Overall, in 28 starts, they scored 3 top 10s and finished 28th in final points, barely losing Rookie of the Year honors to Jeff Burton. John Beck made one start for the team in a number 9 Channelock Chevrolet at Sonoma, finishing 42nd. The 1995 NASCAR Cup Series season started off strong for Diamond Ridge Motor Motorsports. They had Steve Grissom behind the wheel of their number 29 Meineke Chevrolet full-time. The first 12 races, Buddy Parrott served as their team's crew chief. Then Bryant Frazier became the crew chief for the remainder of the 94 Cup Series season. With Parrott as crew chief, their best start was 15th and their best finish was 5th, both coming at North Wilkesboro, 
in the spring. In those 11 starts, they scored one top five and four top tens. And nine top 20s. Even after D and Qing at Richmond in the spring, the team was still 15th in points at the time that Parrott left the team. Then things really fell off performance-wise. In the remaining 18 NASCAR Cup Series starts, with Frazier as crew chief, the performance was like night and day. The team didn't even score another top 10 finish since he became crew chief. Overall, the team scored zero pulls, zero wins, one top five, and four top tens, finishing 27th in final points. Over in the Xfinity Series, Grissom and Diamond Ridge Motorsports made 15 starts in the number 29 Chenelock Chevrolet. His best qualifying run was third at Darlington in the spring. Their best finish was in a race was the team's two visits to Victory Lane at both Bristol races. Overall, in those 15 starts, they scored zero poles, two wins, four top fives, and seven top tens, still finishing 27th in final points, only running half the races. For 1996, Diamond Ridge Motorsports began the season with a new, sp new sponsorship from C Cartoon Network on their number 29 Chevrolet in NASCAR Cup Series. They had Steve Grissom attempt the first 18 races in the Cup Series, qualifying for only 13 of them. His best finish was a strong run at Rockingham in the spring. He scored two top tens in, in those 13 starts. So I get so it was only 13 starts, not 18 starts. Then Greg Sachs made six starts for the number 29 Cartoon Network Chevrolet with his best finish coming at Talladega in the summer of 25th. Now Butch Leitzinger climbed behind the wheel of the Cartoon Network number 29 for Watkins Glen to a top 20 finish, finishing 20th. The next driver to get an opportunity behind the wheel of the number 29 Chevrolet was Chad Little. He made five attempts, qualifying for four of them, with his strongest run coming at Dover in the fall, finishing 20th. Jeff Green made two starts for the team. His best finish was 26th at Charlotte in the fall. To finish the 1996 season, the team brought in Robert Presley to drive for three starts, with his best finish at 33rd at Atlanta coming in the fall. Overall, the team scored one pole, or one top five, and two top tens, finishing 33rd in final points. In the Xfinity Series, the team had Steve Grissom begin the season, making eight starts in a number 29 WCW Chevrolet. Grissom's best runs was a victory in the season opening race at Daytona, and they led the most laps as well. In eight starts, Grissom scored one win, three top fives, and four top tens. Next, the team's, team's Cup Series crew chief made two starts. Bill Engle at South Boston and Loudoun with his best best run coming at South Boston, 22nd. Greg Sachs signed a run with Roland one race deal with, with Diamond Ridge Motorsports and won the race at Talladega. After having several drivers behind the wheel of their race car in 1996, the team finally settled on Elliott Sadler to finish the season for the number 29 team, making eight attempts and qualifying for seven of them. Their best finish was fifth at Homestead in the fall. Sadler scored one top five and three top tens in seven starts. Overall, throughout the year, the team scored zero poles, two wins, seven top fives, and eight top tens. The team had six different drivers behind the wheel of the number 29 Chevrolet. Now, that following season, in, in 1997, Diamond Ridge Motorsports team began the season with Robert Presley behind the wheel of the number 29 Cartoon Network Chevrolet. Presley attempted 10 races, DNQing for 3 of them. His best finish was 14th at Bristol in the spring. Then Bechtel released Presley following the spring race at Talladega. Jeff Green was called up from his Xfinity ride with Diamond Ridge to drive the number 29 Cartoon Network car for the remainder of the 97 season. Green attempted 22 NASCAR Cup Series races qualifying for 20 of them. They DNQ'd the two super speedway races at Daytona and Talladega in the summer and the fall. His best finish was at the season finale race in Atlanta, finishing a impressive fourth. 
Throughout the season, the team qualified for 27 races between the two different drivers, scoring one top five and two top tens, with a 37th place final points finish and owner points. Now, in the Xfinity series, on that side of the team, things were really starting to come together. They signed Elliot Sadler to drive the number 29 Chevrolet full-time in 1997. They began the season without sponsorship, but after a pretty strong start to the season, starting at race 8 at Texas, Phillips 66 came aboard as the team's new primary sponsor. Sadler's best start was his first four career poles, coming at Daytona, Darlington, and Nazareth in the spring, then Myrtle Beach in the summer. His best finish was his first three career victories at Nazareth in the spring, Myrtle Beach, and Gateway in the summer. Overall, Sadler scored four poles, three wins, six top fives, and ten top tens, finishing fifth in final points. Elliot's brother, Hermie Sadler, was also his teammate at Diamond Ridge Motorsports, driving his number one DeWalt Tools Chevrolet. Hermie's best start was first twice at Bristol in the summer in Michigan in the fall. His best start was third at, 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 at the Milwaukee Mile in the summer. Overall, he did score two poles, but he wasn't able to score a win. He did land two top fives and seven top tens, finishing tenth in final points. Now, Jeff Green, he made 14 starts for the team before he was called up to the Cup Series to drive their number 29 Chevrolet. In those 14 starts for that number eight, his best start was first twice at Las Vegas and Texas in the spring. His best finish was first at, at Las Vegas in the spring. In all, he scored two poles, one win, six top fives, and seven top tens in just 14 starts. Unfortunately, Cartoon Network left as sponsor of the team in the Cup, of the Cup Series team at the end of the season in 1997. The 1998 season started off really difficult for Diamond Ridge Motorsports as far as the Cup Series program. They attempted seven races with Jeff Green behind the wheel of the number 29 Team Monte Carlo Chevrolet. They DNQ'd for more races than they qualified for, only making three starts. His best finish was 22nd at Rockingham in the spring. Elliott Sadler made two starts for the team in the, in the Cup Series later in the season in the number 92 Chevrolet. His best finish was 24th at Bristol in the fall. As for the Xfinity Series side of the team, Elliott Sadler ran full-time behind the wheel of their newly renumbered to go with their sponsor, number 66, Philip 66, Chevrolet. His best qualifying run was first at Texas in the spring. Once again, he took this team to victory lane twice, this time at Bristol in the spring and at Rockingham in the fall. Overall, he scored one pole, two, two wins, Five top fives and ten top tens, finishing eighth in final points. His brother, Hermie Sadler, had a very similar season to the season prior, again behind the wheel of Walt Chevrolet. His best finish was second at Hickory in the spring. Overall, Hermie scored two top fives and five top tens, finishing tenth for a second season in a row in final points. At the end of the season, Elliot Sadler left the team to drive in the Cup Series for the Wood Brothers number 21 Ford full-time. This really was a setback for Diamond Ridge Motorsports because they felt as though Elliott Sadler was going to be the driver of the future for them to bring them back to the Cup Series. Bring, you know, prominence in the Cup Series, if you will. But that was not to be. Now that was not happening. The team more or less officially closed down its Cup Series program. But at the time, it planned to return to the Cup Series in 2001. But well, we all know that that did not happen. But rather, the number 29 ended up going to Kevin Harvick when Dale Earnhardt passed away. That following season in 1999, Gary Bechtel merged his Xfinity Series team with Joe Gibbs Racing and fielded a number 4 Lance Snacks Chevrolet for Jeff Purvis to drive full-time. His best finish was third twice at Talladega and Loudoun in the spring. Overall, he scored zero poles, zero wins, four top fives, and 12 top tens, finishing sixth in final points. The team also fielded a second car, a number 29 Chevrolet, for Curtis Markham for four, or four races, but a lack of sponsorship kept it from becoming a full-time ride. His best finish was 12th at, da at Daytona in the spring. The, uh, during 
The 1999 season, Bechtel lost his interest in the team and decided to sell the entire operation to Joe Gibbs Racing. Gary Bechtel himself returned to NASCAR in November 2009 to reform, or to form rather, Diamond Walter Racing. They fielded a number 99 out pet care and Aaron's Toyota with Trevor Bain behind the wheel. Bain, met, Bain made 28 starts for the team before leaving for Roush Fenway Racing to finish the season in 2010. In those 28 starts, his best start was first three times, three in a row, matter of fact, in the summer at Gateway, IRP, and Iowa. His best finish was third twice at Gateway in the summer, then at Richmond in the fall. Overall, Bain scored three poles, zero wins, five top fives, and ten top tens. Now the Truex brothers finished out the season. Bechtel was unable to come up with a sponsor for the 2011 NASCAR Xfinity Series season, so that was it for his time in NASCAR. Now, Diamond Ridge Motorsports had 13 different drivers spend time behind the wheel of one of their team's race cars. They never won a Cup Series race, but had a good amount of success in the Xfinity Series. The team's main drivers were Steve Grissom, Jeff Green, and Elliott Sadler. Now, in 124 NASCAR Cup Series starts, they scored 0 poles, 0 wins, 3 top 5s, and 11 top 10s, with a best owner points finish of 27th in 1995. In the Xfinity Series, the team scored 9 poles, 11 wins, 37 top 5s, and 61 top 10s, and their best points finish was 5th in 1997. With Elliott Sadler driving the team's number 29, Phillips 66 Chevrolet. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care.